guys, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club, where we just left off. Yes, I sold my soul to the Literature Club for a cupcake. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay, so, it's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club members will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Oh my god, kitty. <laughs> well, um, contamination. Who I got more of. I really don't. Hi again, cat. I gotta take a drink. I'm sorry. Hang on, Monica. Give me like two seconds. Oh god. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> uh don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promises, cat. I hope this isn't too overwhelming. Overwhelming. Other commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. Siri told me you didn't even want to join the clu any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Noski, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Ma, ma. Noski finds herself stuck somewhere between saying Monica and manga. Manga's literature too. Swiftly defeated, Noski plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Pat always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. She, she's having fun. He helps me with busy work. Without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Siri, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. You almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Kat can become good friends with good friends too. Oh my gosh. Um, uh. Sayori. Huh? Uh, as usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, you even brought you something today, you know? Wait, Sayori. Uh, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? <sighs> Never mind. Jerry made it sound like it was a big deal when it's really not. Um, what do I do? Uh, I'm sorry, Yuri, I, I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it, it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you want. This is... How's this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll, I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read 
at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica, 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 Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Siri and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Siri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she's waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki's rummaging, rummaging around in the closet. Man, looks like no one wants to be bothered today. Slumped down in the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with some occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me. I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I'll probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. They're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all these other clubs. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone that literature, what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know. We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative mind. Hmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Uh, what do you mean? come up with the most fun thing ever? Nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sarah's talking this, taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh. That's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? What kind? Oh, uh, well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! Ah, <laughs> good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Oh, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. <laughs> cupcakes it is, then. Hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of it, the event itself. I find myself smiling. Man, Siri is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Siri can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I ended up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Oh, wow! I open my eyes to find Sari's face, filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like this. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying here late. You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're going to have less time for anime, you know? You need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true though. Yeah, I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sarah. <laughs> what I do best. That's a problem. But what about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Uh, not every day. It's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Siri, it's written all over you. Eh? Siri glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? You are clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Eh? I run my fingertips down the side of Sarah's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't even straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right here. I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. 
Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Hey, you meanie. You don't even have the blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori? Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Oh, no! I'm so mean! Eh? That's super mean! Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Aww. <laughs> this is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking about how weird it is to have a friend who does think these kinds of things. Okay. But don't say that. Maybe don't make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay though. I'm happy we're like this. Are you? Uh, I, uh, I guess. Hey, be careful! The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I started to fully close the, the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. Ugh. If you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. Why are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. Oh my god. Hey, don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so. Uh, I just feel strange to see Sarah's blazer buttoned up like that. But it's so stuffy. Ugh. It's not worth it at all. Siri hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew! That's so much better. Siri puts her arms out and twirls around. If I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? Why are you saying it like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't let me do. <laughs> he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you would take care. Of, and you would take care of me better than anybody else would, anyways. That's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Oh, stop saying all these embarrassing things. <sighs> I, I didn't say anything embarrassing. Well, anyways, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine, it's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> so maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. I'm doing it again, Sayori. Oh, but I was just joking that time. Possible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Uh, Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we show the poems we wrote now? Yay! Cat, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I feel <laughs> I feel I feel the sound enthusiastic, but Sari still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last time? Yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I really find much, much inspiration, since I've really never done this before. Well, now that everybody's ready, why don't you find something to share it with? I can't wait! Siri modically enthusiastically pull out their poems. Siri's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching to their bags. I do the same myself. show my poem to first? Uh, Sayori, because she's my favorite. I'm definitely more comfortable sharing with Sayori first. She's my good friend, after all. Oh, my goodness. This is so good, Kat. Uh, I love it. I had no idea you were such a good writer. Oh, Sayori. You must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion is to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Nazis. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Huh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a cat poem. Makes it really, it feel really extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Siri hugs.
hugs the sheet against your chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Oh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Kat. Deep down, you're not, a self you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people? That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That would be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Hey! Now you read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you go through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> Sorry. This is just a guess. Did you wait until this morning to write this? No. Just, just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Ah, uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice. Er, how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school. If I to skip breakfast, I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyways, uh, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Oh, uh, yeah. Next time I won't forget. Write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Uh, I'm gonna go with Natsuki next. I'm just gonna go down the line. Hmm. Mm. Well, it's about what I expected from somebody like you. Well, that's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. It just didn't evoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your tastes. Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. <sighs> well, anyways, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. That's about it. Oh, that's nice. I mean, yeah? Yeah. I told you that you weren't going to like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that... <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Almost died of my own spit. Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't that the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Which is highly true. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like, I set up for a rhythm at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feelings in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. So what it... That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. 
Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to hum humor her with the last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Um, I'll just keep going down the line. stares at the poem. A minute passes. Well, not enough time for her to finish reading. Um... Oh! Sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Uh, um... It's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah? Why do you ask? Just making sure. I guess that it might. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Ah, so it's that bad. No. Did I just raise my voice? Ah, uh, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. Couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and I haven't really gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine. I, I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Right, um, it's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers, and having been through it myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic pattern, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both, it's, both the style and the expressiveness are weak. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing, even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little, a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Uh, um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm sure if Yuri is apologizing- I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if it's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature show? Goes through the light. The trendles in my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bates, it must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Calm, breathing air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. Oh, that was nice. I'm sorry I have such terrible hair. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. I'm dyslexic. <laughs> ah. Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting's pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I, I liked your poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you liked it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Kat. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you should only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbo sim blah, symbolically oh my god, symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in her last remaining place of comfort and able to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. A lot more solemn putting it that way. I haven't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things too. The 
Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Alright. Let's go, Monica. Hi, Cat. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Cat. We're all a little bit embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. And Monica, my poem. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sort of things in common. Oh, well. We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you? Sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get while reading your poem. Hmm. You, you sure you're not reading too much into this? Haha, <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, it sounds like Yuri. But in any case, Siri's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew that somebody so happy would enjoy sad things, too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit, okay? I'm sure we'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing things. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kind of style. But I'll always help you find what suits you the most, so don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. So I'm pretty confident for somebody who claims to be not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then hole in the wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction? The spackle protrudes. See the, See the direction the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I was at home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel. Blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. I can't read her handwriting. Her retinas? Already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image? It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep, stretching forever into nothing. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out, and he was looking on the other side, looking in. That's creepy. So what do you think? Um, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> It's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the time between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, uh, well, I'm not too sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. I've been influencing my poems a bit. Epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is, if you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big, dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's 
that's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems could stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. <sighs> Up getting myself into. Across the room, Sarah and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Uh. Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dis- dismissively returns the poem to her desk the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Aw, oh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? Uh, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. <sighs> you mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Really, it, 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 but it really didn't come across. Oh, oh my god! Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked somebody who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. They already liked it, and Kat did too. So, based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing skill. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. Mm. And Kat likes my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh-uh. That's not what I... Uh. You're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Kat appreciates my, my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make anything I do overly cutesy. Ugh! One whose boobs magically grew a size of ba- a size bigger as soon as cats started showing up. Natsuki. Um, Natsuki, that's a little. This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, you guys. Suddenly, birth- both girls torn- turned towards me as if they noticed I was just standing there. Cat, she she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true at all. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The man should jump out at the reader, not force him to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Kat. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only necessary, unnecessary, uh, unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Kat? Um... think about writing. Remember my three words. They'll probably think more highly of me. Uh, Sayori, help. Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead I turn to Yuri. Yuri. Oh god, but Yuri's expression is so defenseless I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori! Eh. Yeah, everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can you two, how can the two of you keep fighting when you're making your friend feel like this? Cat. Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. Uh, I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being, she would never. It's your immaturity that's made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why... Exactly why nobody likes- Stop! 
Trotsky's. Yay! You guys are my friends. I, I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people, and I love both of I love you both because of the, their differences. Trotsky's poems? They're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems? are amazing because they, they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? Because... Nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they've always been. Big and beautiful. Oh, God. Yuri. Yuri stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll mix it to you. Yuri rushes off. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So this is why Yuri is vice president. I whispered to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I'm off as a good leader, and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing to me. <laughs> nah. It's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess that just means Siri is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's really suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I hate to see her get herself hurt. It makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to pop. Such a, such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Mostly. Pat, how about you? Yeah, I'd, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome! In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. I feel like that means I can at least do a better job of pressing those I want to impress. I found myself with newfound determination. Pat! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Siri beams at me. It truly has been a while since Siri and I spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Siri? About what happened earlier. Eh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki? Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've ever seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I could see why they make good friends with you. You know, Kat, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. on onto the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her. But it's easy to use Sayori as an inter internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Whew. Okay. So, I'm gonna save here. Alright, good lord. So, this episode is now 40 minutes long, holy crap. Okay, so, um, yeah, I really want to go after Sayori, because I like her a lot. We'll see. If you guys like this episode, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, if you guys want to play this game for yourself, I highly recommend it. I think you'd have fun. And, um, let me know down in the comments below what girl you'd like to go after. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye!